Welcome back at lecture 2. In this lecture, we will speak more about the nature of econometrics and we will see that the definition and goals of econometrics. In addition, we will introduce a topic by discussing some examples and we will see that how can we construct a simple and basic models or equations for these models to be used in estimating the relationship between variables. The nature of econometrics and economic data. Here we have a question. What is econometrics? Usually econometrics is already consists of two words, economics and metrics. The first is known. Second is a way of measure. So this means that use of a statistical method or measures to analyze economic data. Econometricians, or those specialists in econometrics, typically analyze non-experimental data, which means data not generated in experiment or in labs, but instead they are using real data or collected data. Here we have some goals for econometric analysis. We can go one by one for them. First, estimating relationship between economic variables, testing economic theories and hypotheses, forecasting economic variables, evaluating and implementing government and business policy. If you're going for the first one, estimating relationship between economic variables, we can give an example of this. Usually for those who studied economics before, they know that there is could be a negative relationship between the quantity demanded and the price. When we said that we are looking to estimate the relationship, here we are looking to determine the effect of an increase in the price by one unit, for example, on the quantity demanded. If we're going for the second one, testing economic theories and hypotheses, using the same example, we know there is a negative relationship between quantity demanded and the price. After estimating model, we can see the sign. If this is negative, so the theory exists. If not, we should looking for reasons or a chain theory. Forecasting economic variable. As long as we estimate the relationship between variables like price and the quantity demanded, we can see what could happen to the quantity demanded in the future if we expect a specific value for the price. Finally, we evaluate and implement policies in case of government and business. As long as we can test the effects and forecast for the future. How can we construct the econometric analysis? Usually we have two steps. First, to construct the economic model. And this is guided by the theory. Second, is transferring this economic model to econometric model. Later we will see that how can we transfer this. When we speak about economic models, we could have the following. This could be for microeconomics or macroeconomic models, which means concerning micro-level data or macro-level data. 
Here we usually use optimizing behavior or equilibrium modeling. Optimizing behavior something like maximum and minimum in case of profit or loss. Equilibrium model like the market model where we're looking for equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. Here we have an example for economic model of crime introduced by Baker in 1968. We drive the equation for criminal activities based on utility maximization. We're looking for Y. This represents our spend in criminal activities. And we expect this could be a function of the following. Following represent x's from 1 to 7. x1 is wage of criminal activities, which means how much the person could receive from doing criminal activities. It could be positive relation with y. x2 which for legal employment which means how much a person will get from working in legal activities it's expected to have a negative relationship with our spend in criminal activities other income which means income from different resources except wages from criminals or legal employment. We expect the relation between Y and X3 could be negative. Probability of getting caught, which means how many caught from those who are doing criminal activities as a percentage. It should be negative relation with y. Probability of conviction if caught, which means how many of those they already caught will go to the court and the court give them sentence it could be a negative relation for number six x6 in this case it is expected sentence which means how many years for example those are working in criminal activities court and conviction will stay in the prison and we expect this relation could be a negative for the verb number seven x7 it is age here we could expect something like this old people they are not interested in working in criminal activities but those, they are really young and looking for money and they are really risk taker, they could accept it. Here we have a comment. The functional form of relationship not specified. We just propose there could be a relationship between y and x in this case maybe we don't have any economics a specific equation to model these relations 
but we will use logic. Here we have another example for constructing expected relationship between variables. This model is for job training and worker productivity. The question is, what is the effect of additional training on worker productivity? From economic theory, we know the following. Wages could be related to the human capital, measured by three variables. These variables are education, measured by years of formal education, the person is spending expert which refer to years of work force experience finally training this could be measured by weeks spent in job training we expect these three could affect hourly wages in average but we have a question here. Other factors may be relevant. But these are the most important. And could be those measurable. Maybe others or other variables not measurable. Returning back to the Baker model, and here we assume that the functional form could be as following. Assuming that the relationship between crime, which measures of criminal activities, which represent dependent variable usually will refer to this by letter Y in general cases and other variables the six variables here we can explain one by one as following but we assume that the relationship is linear as long as all variables raised to the power 1. Beta 1 is the crime activities in case that there is no impact from the six variables. Beta 1 represent the impact of wage for legal employment. Beta 2 this is the impact of other income on crime activity. Beta 3 is measuring how could be the increase in the crime activities in case there is a change in frequency of prayer arrest. Beta 4 this is the coefficient of frequency of conviction. Beta 5 is the effect of average sentence links after conviction. Finally, beta 6, which shows how the age could affect criminal activities. Finally, we have the letter U. We call this as unobserved determinants of criminal activities. Sometimes we call this as error. Sometimes we call this as residual. 
and this could include some data which excluded from the relationship but could affect it. Here we can see that, for example, it could be moral character, how the moral of the person could affect his attitude toward doing criminal activities, but we cannot measure this in some cases. Wage in criminal activities, legal wages could be recorded we can obtain it but wage in criminal activities it is hidden not that easy to get it here we are turning back to the example of training and work productivity we see the relationship between hourly wages measured by wage variable. Here, beta 1. This represents the average wage for person has no education, no experience or training. But in case that the person has some education, the wage will increase by beta 1. As education is years of formal education. Beta 2 is showing the relationship between years of workforce experience and hourly wages. And we expect this could be positive. What about the training? The main core of this here we can see that the relation between training in weeks spent in job training and hourly wages is summarized in beta 3. It expects to be positive. As we can see from this equation. But don't forget that we still have you here. The unobserved determinants of the wages. What could be included in you? This could be innate ability, the nature of the person, the ability of the person. Also, it could be quality of education. Because we don't have a specific measure for quality here. We only have three variables. Years of education. Years of workforce experience. Weeks spent in job training. We can say that most of econometrations deals with the specification of the error U. Econometric models may be used for hypothesis tests, like, for example, the parameter P3 represents the effect of training on wages. How large is the effect? Is it different from zero? If the answer is yes, we expect that there could be a relationship and impact of training on the hourly wages. If it is not different from zero, so we can conclude that the weeks spent in job training has no actual impact on the hourly wages earned by workers, and this could already get the workers out of training and they are not welcoming for getting any training anymore. This is the end. Thanks.